Hello, beautiful people. I'm Danny. And I'm Britt. And this is the Gay Cousin Club Podcast. All right, let's call this meeting to order. Well, hello and welcome back, everybody. Uh, we have about a week late here, but that's because... I got a sinus infection. Yay. And then it was my 30th birthday. So I'm not going to do stuff on my birthday. And I think that is reasonable. That's fair. Um, Thank you. But there is one thing I wanted to start off saying at um, the beginning of this, though, is when I was listening back to the last episode and like doing the editing and stuff, I got to say, I was kind of disappointed in myself. Because, like, I called myself dumb and stupid so many times in the last episode. And um, I don't know if other people find that annoying. But I found that very annoying um, for myself because I do not find myself that dumb and stupid. So just moving forward, I'm going to do my best to not do that. Where, like, I am fine with being the butt of my own jokes. But that was self-deprecating and not the way that I normally like. So. You were strong. You were smart. I don't, know what that, I don't know how that cool goes. I don't know either, but it felt good. Something like that. Yeah, you killed it. All right, Britt, how are you today? I'm all right. I'm super tired, but we're going to rally. But I actually, I have a rant to start on. Okay, <laughs> so cool. This episode came as a result of transphobes just fucking pissing me off. Uh? In our government, in like my town in people that I thought weren't dickheads, like just in general. I'm like, uh, and, and, and this time of the year around the trans day of visibility, you got the fucking gall. Do, are you for real? Right. So this episode came as a result of that. And I would like to extend, you know, because I can be the bigger person. I'd like to extend a sincere, um, heartfelt bottom of my heart, uh, get fucked to those people. And I'm just going to tell a trans yes. story. <laughs> I love it. And that sounds like there's some um, backstory that I'm going to want to hear about later or <laughs> well, edit out now if you care to share. Just look at the news. But yeah. Oh, the, it was the people that like, oh, you didn't think were dicks. And okay. I was like, so yeah, you're going to say this out. So <laughs> you a bitch. Fuck. I'm like, oh, so they're they're just a fucking pleb so that's fine and then i immediately started researching this story because i got pissed off so. i love that though uh well i mean the that the rage inspired you that's yeah. always so you can basically very helpful. um if i d- depending on if danny has any fancy editing techniques you might hear a little beep there and then me calling somebody a pleb afterwards i'm irritated we can work on that we can work on we can do that (laughs) that's fine so i have this is a mix of stuff so one it's a trans story we love a trans story especially we sure right now and so like kind of belated celebration of you know the week of trans visibility day of trans visibility but also it's an old timey crimey story we haven't had any like that since our halloween episodes we haven't yeah and oh um disclaimer this is not going to be like a traumatic kind of like crime against trans people because that would be fucked to celebrate oh that, yeah that would in be that a way. Super... <laughs> hey happy trans day of visibility also <laughs> get fucked like that would be um not kind of like, shitty not to spoil the fun but it's going to be a trans woman robbing which rich white men and i support women's rights and women's wrongs so okay. i'm here for it <laughs> i support women's rights and women's wrongs that was beautiful <laughs> and also like could that be more fucking correct for this political climate of trans women robbing rich white men like what fuck you you think let's you can make laws about my body i'm just gonna steal your shit let's i like that i'm okay with that uh, so that's this is actually the story of one of well, the earliest recorded stories of a trans woman in America, because of course there were, there were trans okay. women before this, especially when we think of like two spirit people from, oh, yeah. you know, indigenous communities. But the kind of the, the part here is recorded. So this is the exactly. first time there's a lot of like those actually written down discussions of this. Yeah, that so, makes sense. We're going to start with the night of the crime. <laughs> oh yeah that was supposed to be bubba bub it came up more like burr, 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 burr. sorry no okay. i know i got it it was like it was just like the old timey um i just like, didn't find the crime. right key. <laughs> yeah no it was good it was good okay so tuesday june 11th of 1836 around 10 p.m which okay because of who i am as a person i read 
way more about this than necessary but some reports do put this as a few days later but it was like 200 years ago so just like get off my just dick fucking it, okay? deal with it. it's june 11th all right okay <laughs> <laughs> okay. So a mason named Robert Haslam, a white man, was oh, man. Oh, boo. Um, was walking home in what is now like considered like the lower Manhattan neighborhood of Soho after a liaison with a woman uh-huh. he had picked up earlier this evening. Um, and that was later reported by the New York Herald. So that's one of the sources that a lot of this information is coming from. And I mean, so I think this already gives us some background. Mr. Haslam likes himself a lady of the night. Okay? Alrighty. So already he's, you know, he's had this liaison and I'm going to keep saying it that way with this woman. Okay. That makes is- me, it, like I get such a dopamine rush each time does you it do it. your brain? <laughs> it does. I'm just like. <laughs> um, so he's walking down Bleecker Street and Haslam meets this black woman um, who identifies herself as Mary Jones. Okay. Um, according to the New York Herald, she was, quote, dressed eleg- elegantly and in perfect style with white earrings and a comb in her hair. So Bet your good looking girls. Yeah. Yeah. Um in the other Get big it, source, Jones. Yeah. The other big source that a lot of historians look to for this the early story at least is the New York Sun. So I'll kind of be going back and forth between the Herald and the Sun. Um, but keep in mind sensationalism. So um, but anyway, the New York Sun later added that Mary Jones also went by the names Miss Ophelia, Miss June, and Eliza Smith. So we've got, you know, a a woman of mystery here. Oh. Well? Hey, I'm a woman yeah, of intrigue. A woman of intrigue. There's an air of mystery here about her identity. So after a bit of chit chat, Haslam cuts the shit and asks Mary, "Where are you going, my pretty maid?" And then just volunteers to go with her because that's not shady. Okay, that's not the question I thought that you were going to say. He asked. <laughs> I honestly, I don't know if he was as polite about it. Like this is like, you know, interviews coming from him. I'm like, bitch, you were not. Hey, girl, about it. Yeah. what you got doing over there? So, according to the Herald, she, quote, lovingly threw her arms around him and strained him to her heart. Um, Then they went into an alley and bone. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, because it was lovingly. Yeah, so they went down here. my John. Yeah, this alley in Green Street. It was kind of like a pretty commonly known area to be used by sex workers. Um, The newspapers don't go into detail here because, you know, you don't want to embarrass poor Mr. Haslam. But I I think we can all take like a pretty educated guess about what happened. Mm -hmm. Um, especially, Especially when we get some of the other details. So afterward, on his way home, probably with a little extra pep in his step, or honestly, no, probably fucking exhausted. Dude just had like two hookups, but whatever. Uh, anyway. Yo, dopamine. Yeah, dopamine rush. Um, so Haslam realized that his wallet containing $99 were missing. I'm going to remind you, this is 1836. My brother in Christ, where do you get $99 in cash in your wallet? Okay, one second. I need to look up the inflation of that. Okay, eighteen thirty six. In the meantime, I had to pay somebody at work ten dollars for Girl Scouts that I bought from his kid. I couldn't scrounge together five dollars in change. I don't like ninety nine dollars. Oh my god! You said it was eighteen thirty six. Yeah. Okay. A hundred dollars in eighteen thirty six. Do you want to take a guess at how much it is now? No, I don't, because I'll feel dumb. <laughs> okay. $3,234 in 84 cents. Homie was carrying nah. that much you money You deserve around. to get robbed. You, you deserve, deserve to get robbed. To get... <laughs> okay, carrying that much money around and getting with ladies of the night in shady fucking back alleys, bro. I sound I sound like such an asshole. Like, you, well, you, you were asking for it, but like, fuck this mm-hmm. guy. I don't, I don't care. So, okay, but also that's ninety nine dollars after the two hookups. Like, yeah, how much was he walking around with? I know, right? Okay, but also he, he this wallet's missing. Okay, but in that in the place where his wallet should have been, he found another wallet of a no. different man, of a man he did not know, with a bank order for two hundred dollars. So what, like six grand? He just he like made money on this deal. <laughs> It was like a bank order. It wasn't like actually cash. But Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you remember, 1830s, what are these fools doing walking around with that on them? Like, come on. Yeah. But like, okay, 1836, put yourself in Haslam's shoes. You just met up with two sex workers on the same night. Are you going to go straight to the police? I mean, I wouldn't, but I feel like he's a dumbass who is carrying around like three grand on this person. So maybe. 
true, but he can experience shame. So he right. first actually looks on his own for the man, you know, whose wallet he now possessed. Um, and at first, this dude is like, no, no, man, that's not mine. That's not that's my name on that. But that's, that's not mine. And then he admits <laughs> that he's like, all right, you know what? I was pickpocketed last night under the same circumstances as you with a little liaison. Oh, yeah. and, but he, but he says he had been quote too wise to expose himself by going to the police. Darling, um, you already exposed yourself. Yeah, uh, Haslam apparently less concerned about public embarrassment, I guess, and just does go to the police after that. He's like, look, we both just got robbed by the same woman. Her name is Mary Jones. She's the hottie around the corner on Bleecker Street. She's so, the hottie with Scotty over on Bleecker Street. Yeah. So Constable Boyer's like, you know what? I'm the man for the job. He goes undercover. Constable. <laughs> yeah. He goes undercover as your average Joe looking for some action. Um, he's dressed as a John, and around midnight, Boyer passed a black woman, and according to the Herald, thinking, quote, thinking that this might be the one he sought. He looked at her face and made up his mind that he was right. <clears throat> Profiling. That's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean it was her. <laughs> but oh, okay, okay. <laughs> but um, According to him, how this went was that he said, where are you going at this time of night? And then she says, I'm going home. Will you go too? He agrees. And she took him to a house and he, she invites him inside. Um, he declines, apparently, with great regret. Mm, okay. Um, mm-hmm. But later walks her to an alley where she asked him, as the Herald put it, to reenact the scene of the previous evening with Haslam. Okay. And goes home and then oh no i can't and she's like okay then how about we leave this house and go back to this alley, to the alley now, where you fuck me? like yeah. come on dude yeah she then proceeded to be very affectionate and that's when boyer arrested her i'm like mm, it kind of seems like you let it get just far enough mm-hmm. and why are you arresting someone for just being affectionate unless other stuff did happen sir mm-hmm So, as articles in the Herald and the Sun both would later report, Mary was an experienced pickpocket and an expert in sleight of hand. Um, Clearly, like, like switching out the wallets is fucking awesome. It gets better, though. So, like, when the officer, when this constable boyer is trying to arrest her, I guess this, like, tussle ensued is what they said. And um, she apparently took two wallets out of, like, her boobs and threw them away. And then... um, one turned out to be Haslam, so she was just like trying to get it off her person, you know. Okay, yeah, so like get rid of the evidence. Yeah, on the way to the jail, jail Jones um, was apparently trying to ditch yet another wallet. Like they had already like searched her, and she was still like just ditching wallets. Oh but you know, we always talk about like how constricting clothing would have been back then, and, like all the layers you had to wear, and like fuck the patriarchy. But like, girl had a lot I of layers to hide shit it. under. Yeah, <laughs> she used it to her advantage. Good for her. Yeah. Um, so, like, in the meantime, the police search Mary's apartment. Like, they're, you know, they're arresting her. They search her apartment. And they find a trunk just chock full of stolen wallets. Um, there were several oh. bank notes in there. They showed them to Robert Haslam. And he could only identify a, a few as being his own. Like, for the most part, like, like these are just all kinds of men. Um, so, they think that Mary could have, like, more missing money in her clothing. So, they decide that a phys- physical examination is going to be necessary, which I can't imagine what that entails with like an all male police staff and searching a woman in 1836. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure it's going to go great. Well, also a woman who is being accused of being a sex worker, like, and a black woman and white men. Yeah, this is, this is not going to go well. Yeah. So the constable searches Mary and discovers that she's trans, like, and he claims, and he made very sure to tell, put this in his report and tell this to the papers, but up until that moment, he had no doubts of her sex. And I'm like, you hooked up with her. Like, why are you uh, so offended? Uh-huh. Whatever. But anyway. Um, oh, no. That makes me gay. I'm not what gay. Is, what is Gross. Gay? Yeah, so this is wild. So tied around her waist with a belt, police found um, basically a, a prosthetic. No vagina made of leather um and it was quote oh god this is coming from the newspaper so i apologize but oh my god i'm so excited okay (laughs) board open in imitation of a woman's womb mistakenly referring to like that ain't their womb there darling yeah um so prior to this discovery neither her arresting officer nor her client had doubted that mary was quote of the sex of the dress of which she had assumed oh my god that's Um, hilarious that was just a really well-made purse (laughs) yeah afterwards she was th- this is awful but she was like consistently and like disparagingly referred to as a man masquerading in women's attire because of you know transphobia the 1830s of mm-hmm. it all but um 
they also assumed, and this is wild to me, like they just put this in their reports. It Haslam must not have known, like he was convinced by this prosthesis because, you know, he either saw that or what they really thought was he could not have had sex with her. He would have known if he had sex with her. Oh my God, you idiot. He for sure had sex with her. Like, how do you think she got all that shit? No, she just got that Gucci. Oh my God. I can't have my Gucci. Oh, Gucci. Uh, (laughs) Okay. May it has a little look. (laughs) So the trial, basically like within the next day. So she's arraigned the next day. Okay. And in her arraignment interview, she's asked to clarify her right or legal name and sex. And we'll come back to that, but that was odd to ask her her legal sex. Not necessary. That does seem strange. So in response, she stated, Peter Sioli, I, I may have pronounced that wrong, but I am a man. So um, she says she's a New York City native of about 33 years of age, and she claimed to have always dressed in women's clothes while attending parties among people of her own color, the, her words, or the words that were used in the newspaper, excuse me. And she had also dressed this way in New Orleans, which is where she spent a good deal of time when she was in the military. So in, the, in New Orleans and then also in black communities in New York, she always dressed as a woman. Okay. So they asked, they go on to ask her, so interesting for an arraignment for theft, but they go on to ask her what had induced her current presentation and mary explained that she knew uh, she referred to them as girls of ill fame so she's referring to sex workers okay and she said that they told her that she looked so much better dressing in feminine attire and she was encouraged for this reason to like pursue that profession i guess line of work yeah yeah and um okay so back to this testimony mary's testimony is like super rare not because of like the detail that it gives but because these interviews these arraignments typically focused on the events of the fucking crime right like so personal oh yeah but i suppose yeah personal questions like name occupation you know like where she's from those are standard like for personal history um Mm -hmm. or for sorry personal identification but like their personal history or accusations other offenses all that shit that wasn't generally allowed Mary faced charges of grand larceny for all of her thefts, but the bulk of this interview transcript is all about g- gender presentation. So uh, you can you can very much already see where this is going to go in the public's eye. Yeah, so, it's just going to be making a circus out of this oh, and like having her be the the, uh, the sideshow. That's what it's yeah. Word that's that's what, exactly what they did to her. Like of couldn't course. have said it better. So, unlike witnesses, defendants weren't automatically allowed to address the court. So, after her arraignment during the actual trial, Mary's testimony from her arraignment was all that the jury would hear of her version of events. And it was, like, read off by other people. They didn't get to hear it in her words. Um, And that arraignment didn't fucking talk about the crime. So, like, yes, she did the crimes, but in the United States of America, you have a right to defend yourself. Exactly. She did not get that right. Um, I think it's, like, also super important to note here that this was the summer of 1836, like I said. And at this time, we were, you know, we've already discussed, like, racism, transphobia, uh-huh. you know, gender inequality. But this is at, this summer specifically was right after um, huge anti-abolitionist and anti-amalgamationist. So that's referring to, um, uh, like, relationships between, um, like, interracial relationships. Okay. So there were riots about this happening in New York City. So the fact that she was specifically engaging, you know, with white men and robbing white men. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So um, as she's led to the courtroom, she's surrounded by this loud, disorderly crowd. Like they're being fucking assholes, accosting her, prodding her. Despite this, though, she showed up every day as a woman. Good for fucking her. Good yeah, for her. Like a pretty woman too. Like people talked about how pretty I, she was, but then they like tried to make her the butt of the, the joke. I'm like, what's so funny that you're attracted to her? Like she's pretty, fucking hot. Sorry. Yeah, a pretty girl's a pretty girl. Fuck off, dude. Yeah. But anyway. So yeah, every day she was donning these like fine dresses. She had her um they said she was in a wig that she, you know, she had done up really well. Um, but yeah, she presented like a beautiful woman. Good for her. So this all created this, like, spectacle to the court of the time, of course. They see a black trans woman in the victimized Haslam. The Herald reported that it provided the great merriment in the court. In his honor, the recorder, the sedate grave recorder, laughed till he cried. Fuck off. What the fuck? <laughs> like, her existence is that hilarious? Ugh, I hate people. <sighs> okay, so I wanted to look up a picture of her really quick. Just oh, because... my God. Yes, there's only one 
out there, but yeah. The um the drawn one? Yeah, we'll talk a lot about her, that later. Like, yeah. Okay. Um well, one, because I was just like, if I just call her fucking hot, I wanna like double check. Two, <laughs> it is check your work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, it is a like drawn picture but just like looking at her features and shit if they were trying to make her out into this like horrible man monster as it's fucking titled yeah so we can just talk about it now so that's as as the trial was happening this caricature cartoon kind of thing was drawn and it's not even a caricature it was it was a drawing of her that was published in the newspapers and it titled her the man monster which is fucked but she looks beautiful in it she's gorgeous in this drawing she's gorgeous well yeah, dressed, they, like, they didn't, composed, like hell holds herself with confidence. They didn't Beautiful. try at all, like to make her look like more no, and that tells or me, anything like that. She looks fucking gorgeous. That tells me they were threatened because not only was she black, not only was she trans, she's a beautiful woman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Ugh. and like holding herself up in a way that makes her look yes. of an elevated status. An elegant as woman. a black woman. Thank an elegant you. woman. At, as a black woman, mm-hmm. they were fucking threatened by her. And, and that's why I think the fact that hurt. there were all these riots about interracial relationships happening, um, I think that was a huge part of it. <sighs> Ooh, Messed you know, up. Gets me going. But yeah. it, this is also fucked. So during the <laughs> trial, someone seated in the audience behind um, like the prisoner's box area where she was, they grabbed her wig from her head. And everybody laughed. Like, literally this whole room laughed. Oh, I'm so fucking mad. That's that's so shitty. That's so that's shitty. That's so horrible. Because yeah. just pick, I can, like, I can picture it, mm-hmm. how fucking horrible that had to have felt. Even if, regardless, even if she's trying to, like, put on this show of, no, I am a bad bitch. Like, I am strong. I've got this snatching the wig and then everyone laughing there's no way that didn't hurt oh my god yeah and it's i keep coming back to what are you so afraid of does jeering Mm -hmm. and abusing this person make you feel more secure that you're all attracted to a trans woman like is that what you're upset about she's pretty and i'm like and i look at oh man this i'm gonna get off my fucking soapbox 2023 same shit black trans women being targeted disproportionately like these people are so fucking threatened by the mm-hmm. beauty of a woman. Mm-hmm. Like let her fucking live. <gasps> yeah. I'm sorry that people are fucking attractive and that people know how to make themselves look more conventionally attractive. Well, and the fact and that And that's just and what it people is. just want and the fact that people have the confidence to live their own truth. Is that that threatening yes. to you because you are afraid to be who you are? Like look inward. And then you get people who are, I guess I'll just say it, cisgender women who are just, like, fucking horrible about these gorgeous Mm -hmm. women. And it's like, it's because you're jealous. You're threatened. You're so insecure about yourself and how you fit into this. Fuck the TERFs. Fuck the exactly. turf. Exactly. You are I'm on a I'm back on my fucking soapbox again. This JK is Rowling, this is to you. Yeah. Yes. Rip, bitch. Ugh. Mm-hmm. Ooh, maybe take that out. That was a little bit death ready. But <laughs> I don't um, fucking care. So I uh, you are not a feminist if you're a turf. Okay? If you're a trans exclusionary, you're not a fucking feminist. Feminism is for all women, it's intersectional. Yeah radical about you is how radically far your head is up your ass yeah feminism is for all people and it is not exclusionary it is intersectional and also while i'm on this soapbox the homophobia has been fucking driving me nuts too you are not woke because you have a couple gay friends you don't get to start talking around the start tossing around the f slur because you have a gay friend that's not Not fucking okay Mm-hmm. It's like a white person dropping the N-bomb who's like, oh, I have a black friend. I'm like, get fucked. Sincerely, no, get there's fucked. there's no such thing as the N-word card. There's no such thing as the F-word card. It's that you're an insecure little bitch and, like, you need to go and look inwardly. And I'm sorry, let's not fucking tokenize people that, oh, I have a gay friend so I can do this. Or, oh, I have a black friend so I can do this. Or, oh, I have a gay podcast so I can do this. <laughs> are you talking about something in particular danny 
I most certainly am that I do not want our podcast to be used as someone's little token of, look, I said I was going to be inclusionary. So now I'm inclusionary, even though it's not my cup of tea. And I certainly hope that this man has decided to listen all the way up to episode 13. Oh, girl, I you know that's not going to happen. I know, but it makes me feel good saying it out loud. You know what? We will find our people that... There are other groups out there who support other podcasters, and we will find the people who aren't going to tokenize us, and we're better off without it. I (laughs) I am not going to be anybody's, like, prize. Oh, for sure. Yeah. (laughs) No, honey. No, no. Nope. Sorry. White man. man. Okay. (laughs) I was wondering if that was going to come up. Uh, Um, So, okay. So, the trial. (laughs) All right. So, it's June 16th, so we're still within the same fucking week of the crime. Like, unreal. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of wow. fantastic investig- investigatory work was happening here, but... I'm sure. Yeah. So, records of Mary's trial before the Court of General Sessions on June 16th, or, you know, like I said, with days within her arrest, um, shows that Mary's accuser, as well as the men who, like, arrested and searched her, they were all able to give their testimony to the jury. But Mary did not receive the same right. Instead, like I said before, that transcription of her arraignment interview that focused on her fucking gender presentation was read as part of the people's evidence against her. That was their evidence against her. Okay, question. Yeah. Do you think, slash and or, I don't know if they gave, like, reasoning for this. So mm-hmm. I'm trying to, like, put my head up my ass as far as I can to understand logic here. And is it because she was black? That they're like, oh, she doesn't have the right to represent herself this way. Or, because we're also in the time period of it, or is it that you're recognizing her as a woman and that's why you're not letting her defend herself because you don't think that women have rights either? I think you hit it not, uh, hit the nail on the head. I don't think it's an or. I think it's an and. She's trans, she's a woman, and she's black. Yeah. So, I think like, it's... they're fucking recognizing it enough to oppress her, but not uh-huh. enough to uh-huh. not be fucking assholes. Snaps. Snaps. That's exactly it. That is exactly, like, what my brain has been, like, dancing around, but couldn't quite, like, you know, find the words for. That's exactly and, it. Like, they're recognizing her femininity. Enough to oppress, yep. but not enough for it to mean anything. 100%. 100%. Oh, disgusting. So... I'll let you take a, a wild guess, Danny. What do you think the jury found? See. Yeah, she was absolutely Shut found in. guilty. Yeah. So, which, I mean, she, like, I mean, don't get me she wrong. Was, I'm not saying she, she like, she, it's not like excusing her of her crime. Like, she did commit grand larceny. Like, she was mm-hmm. very obviously a thief. But <laughs> it's the fact that she didn't get to her right to defend herself. She didn't get a fair trial. That's um, not fair. No, she did not get it. She did not get a fair trial. So the Herald reports that the jury. Nor was she treated like a decent consul- human being. Okay, you got to hear this part, though. The Herald reports that the jury, after consulting a few moments, returned a verdict of guilty of grand larceny, sentenced to five years hard labor in Sing Sing State Prison. What? Five years hard labor. A few moments, and you decided five years hard labor in Sing Sing? Yeah. Yeah. And that's obviously the maximum sentence for her offense, and she got slapped at the maximum immediately. Of and so she, she wasn't... Did eventually because she scares them yeah eventually she will become pretty well known to the police because she's still back on her bullshit but um which means she does survive that hard labor so that's good I, but I, the fact that this was her first offense because they didn't they didn't know of her before this had to be the, well, the first big one at least like maybe there was some mm-hmm. smaller petty shit but like five years wow wow so i i have feelings here uh obviously her sentence which you know, we've talked, I think, has a lot more to do with race, gender expression than anything else. Oh, yeah. But let's let's be super clear about this. The same people that were judging her were the ones who used her services. Most exactly. of the wallets found in her possession or in her home belonged to the city's white male upper class. And were okay. they prosecuted? Because technically what they were doing was illegal as well. Of course they were oh, not. Right. Exactly. Um and the thing is, you know, the assumption was, well, these men could have had sex with her. They would have known. Or if they did have sex with her, that it was with her little pocket vagina. Mm-hmm. And not, you know, because if it would have been, you know, we've talked before, like there were like, just like in England had buggery laws, there were sodomy laws here. So 
you, you catch my drift here? Like, regardless of okay, what was happening, still, these men were not, they didn't have to be held responsible for anything. It was only Mary. But even then, even if it was like, oh, well, then it wasn't actually sex. So it's okay. We can't get them. No, because then it's still like public assisted masturbation, if you want to look at it that way, which would be public indecency. So it's like, no, Danny's still very well versed in the laws of this. 1830s New York. <laughs> Well, at least I'm more well-versed than these fucking cops. Well, okay. So uh, the thing is, a lot of these men just never reported it to the police, though. Yeah. They were scared of what the conservative public would think. So just it wouldn't have made a difference. Like, there was no proof that they had done anything. So by June 17th, just like within still a week of her crimes, um, the Herald and the Sun both carried these detailed stories of the case. Everybody knew who Mary was. Harold was super upfront about the fact that Mary was stealing from and sleeping with white men. Um, and again, it seems like people were more upset with the fact that these were interracial relations. Um, and then during the daytime, added the sun, Mary, quote, generally promenades the street dressed in a dashing suit of male apparel and at night prowls the five points and other similar poor, res- disreputable parts of the city in the disguise of a female for the purpose of enticing men into the dens of prostitution, where she picks their pockets of practicable in art in which she is a great adept. If the f- calm down okay. she's not like this <laughs> she's not like this li- I- i'm picturing like a cartoon villain exactly. like girls making a living whatever like and i'm honestly, gonna excuse like, her crimes but she flat out said like she wasn't hiding it, it that like no she dressed this way all the time yeah so no yeah. she wasn't doing this as just a ploy to like fucking work like well, and like, she, I mean, she mainly, did, but like, also, this was her life. Yeah. And she mainly, it seems like, dressed like this or initially around black communities because they were less judgmental of her. Yeah. But I, I can't speak to how she dressed during the daytime. I don't know. It seems like there was a lot of blanks being filled here without knowing the story. But mm-hmm. they, they didn't reference the fact that she was a sex worker. And they were mainly focusing on her as this, like, they expressed her to be this, like, eccentric male who, you know, was donning, donning ladies' clothes, clothes at night. Um, they didn't want to touch the fact that cis men were paying a trans woman for sex. So they, they kind cis of... Cis men uh, were finding her attractive they, enough. They were, yeah, they were obscuring the story just enough to make it sensational without getting into what was really sensational about it because that made them uncomfy. So, you know, like I said before, what exactly are they, these men so embarrassed about, right? Like, are they ashamed to be exposed as the patrons of a female sex worker or a black female sex worker or did they know that she was a trans person and they were ashamed to be exposed as the patrons of a black female trans woman sex worker or and, and i'm that also they like they didn't notice but that would she all was of a them trans not woman notice all of no them? i'm just saying like i'm i'm just saying like even if it's, like, for a few of them. Like, maybe some of them definitely realized it. But, like, if a few of them then are finding out this and then are, like, shit, I didn't even realize. Yeah. Well, and that's part of why I, I mentioned I, – I don't like getting into it too much because I feel like – I don't know. It's such a, like, dark area of history. But – the sodomy laws of the time that's why i mentioned that before because i do i kind of feel like there's something else going on and that's what they these men don't want to get in trouble for like if they really didn't know i i'm not fully convinced that this piece of leather that she was able to fashion herself when she was in relative poverty would have been that convincing to them to this many men i Uh feel like if sex work was happening i think something else was going on and that is what these men are really trying to hide so unless they were all virgins and didn't know what it actually <laughs> felt like <laughs> well in haslam homie had one like immediately before like yeah so i'm like you probably like, are you sure buddy are you sure anyway <laughs> are you so, sure it, it, and there's also just the questions of the why the TikTok so, makes itself <laughs> Uh, there's there's also the question of the why. So, like, some historians question if Mary was robbing rich white dudes specifically because they were likely to carry larger amounts of cash than black men, which I think it makes sense. Like, if she's going for, like, the upper the white upper class, they're going to be carrying more money. Um, mm-hmm. Some really focus on the fact that it was white men. So maybe she had anger against white men. Basically, they're questioning this because in her testimony, she spoke of how, like I said, black people in both New York and New Orleans had always been accepting of her gender expression. So some of them, it kind of, reading some of this, like the the older 
studies because there's not there's not much information out there about Mary but some of the older studies that I was reading it kind of felt like a couple of these guys had bugs up their ass because the implication that she's saying that white people were the ones being prejudicial to which I say fucking duh <laughs> like, fucking of shit my dude yo like does oh it God. hurt looking in the mirror we suck okay <laughs> yeah. historically we are trash it's yeah. fucking true <laughs> yeah <laughs> there's not much more to add to this besides yeah <laughs> yeah oh my god so uh that's on privilege everyone yes, yes. when you oh recognize that historically you've been the privileged one it's okay to recognize that historically it, yeah you i don't care if you're uncomfy recognize it yeah so yeah. i will say some of like the older studies that i've read definitely carried that tone there's been some more recent ones and I'm, that's what i'm going to talk about as we move forward here in some as recent as like 2022 where they've really tried to dig into the history of mary or i suppose like the history of her life after these events because the majority of what we know is coming from the herald and the sun newspaper reports from that week where we don't really know a lot about her life besides that but recently in 2022 there was a team that kind of dug through the municipal archives and we're finding other information about her and it takes on a much different tone then which was refreshing um so the aftermath <laughs> So a week or so after Jones's trial and sentencing, a print of her that you either you looked up before and we'll share it on our Instagram as well. Um, so she's, you know, dressed as a woman as she always was, very elegant. And as Danny mentioned earlier, it was titled The Man Monster, Peter Sewelly, alias Mary Jones. The Man Monster. And you're posting a picture of a beautiful woman. Like, get fucked. Ugh. So it's published all over New York City. It, it spreads. And like you said, despite this monster title, the print still portrayed her as she was a regular, pretty, well-dressed black woman. And she looked like gentle is something I want to point out. Like she looked really sweet. I could see how she was able to manipulate dudes into getting their wallets. One thing I want to point out is um, 1800s, early 1900s, this is the time of like the caricature in newspapers. This yeah. is the time where like people really blew out the um the the characteristics of people to make them look more monstrous or devilish or to make them look a certain way where like this this was the time of the like political cartoon or the satirical cartoon. Well I so, think it's gotten even more so dramatic since then. But yeah oh, you definitely. make a good point here is that they could have taken that opportunity to really blow it out of proportion, but instead they were just so shocked by the fact that this was exactly. a trans woman. That they were like, how do I make that scarier? Like, shut up. <sighs> so it's it's clear from the attention given to Mary's gender in court records, in the newspapers, the media, all of that, how people treated her, um, that they didn't see her gender expression as just like, you know, contrary to the norms, but also indicative of some kind of like character flaw. Like there must be something wrong with her. She must be a monster. If this well, is obviously all the morality laws that surround the LGBTQ oh, community. Of, oh God, exactly. The, the, like queer people are grooming kids. And we're fucking not. It's just literally yeah. not happening. Have you ever been to Look a drag show? Churches. They're wholesome as fuck. <laughs> yes. <sighs> so, you know, like you were saying, is she really monstrous? Is due to just being like they saw her as a man who found a way to have sex with men because she's a trans woman and if we're assuming that these men were aware that she was a trans woman is that what makes her monstrous um it could literally because th that is what some historians think which i think is pretty fucked up they're like oh she was a man who wanted to have sex with men but didn't know how else to do it so she dressed as a woman i'm like nope she's literally a woman because there were queer people at the time. Yeah. That people are going to find a way to fuck. Okay, calm down. Like, And they're not going to have to, like, wear clothes of the other gender every day all the time. To trick time. them into it? Like, come on. In different states yes, throughout exactly. time. Like, exactly. no, darling. Yeah. Oh, you're really looking past the, like, super obvious one. Like, really craning your neck. Like, oh, I don't right. want to look at that one instead. I think it's this. Exactly. And the other part that got people pissed off, you know, like we were talking about, it just literally the fact that she was a black woman and white men were seeking her out. It mm -hmm. to which I say, they were seeking her out. How is she the, the oppressor and they're the oppressed? Good the Lord. only way she's the villain in this scenario is that she like, stole their money. Exactly. And even in a certain sense, I'm still like, go for it, queen. Like, you are the oppressed class. Like, fucking get it. Robin Hood style. But... Right? That's kind of how I was looking at it, too, actually. Uh, <laughs> so, <I> mean, 
I, I mentioned that there's like the February 22, you know, more recent study of Mary's files. Um, so there's more of a discussion than about Mary's life post arrests and post imprisonment. So these aren't going to be super detailed. Well, as detailed as like people's opinions, I guess, um, as her felony file, but there's still some information that they were actually able to find about her that people thought was just because a lot of the earlier stuff that I was reading about her literally just said, and that was the last the world heard of Mary Jones. And I was like, oh, yeah, right. Are you sure? Because I was like, shit, did she die in prison? Like, what the fuck happened? No, it was not the last the world heard of Mary Jones. It was just they didn't take to these archives. So Mary was arrested a, just a fucking bunch of times. She was back in her bullshit as soon as she was out of prison. So she was usually arrested at night in women's clothes for oftentimes actually disorderly conduct or literally just for being homeless like arrested for being Aww. homeless yeah so from this we can see that she continued to live her life as a woman even in like the most dire straits she was a woman right she wasn't some opportunist male looking to take advantage of a poor white man <laughs> as so many historians like want to say she is poor it, fragile white man yeah so it actually, it sounds like in total, Mary spent like over seven years of her life between 1842 and 1858 serving time in various facilities. So we already had Sing Sing. She was also in um, Blackwell's Island Penitentiary, in the tombs. Like she was in oh. the fuck. Yeah. Yeah. As a black dress woman. Oh, my God. Mm. <sighs> so like I said, a lot of reports. She's a she just, badass. If she made it out of all that. those. Hell yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, she was in the military, though, too. So I feel like she she could you know she took a lot of her own yeah i mean so. honestly clearly if like as a black woman like as a black trans woman being a sex worker at this time clearly she had to be able to hold her own because you know she wasn't being treated as a dainty dainty little ceramic doll oh hell no hell no yeah so and ugh, you want to talk about how she was treated okay so like I said, there was all those reports that said that she, oh, she, nothing's known of her. She disappeared. The bullshit, just not true. There's a, a pretty extensive record of arrests and shitty articles. So, like, she still showed up in the media from the time that referred to her as, quote, beefsteak Pete. That's what they started referring to her in the newspapers, like, every time she would get arrested. What? Yeah. So, this, oh, God. And by the way, that's the official record keeper's, like, alt name for her no. also. She, that beefsteak Pete was on official records. Show some professionalism. Like, wow. Yeah. So she she was, Beefsteak apparently referred to her ability to maintain the persona of a cis woman during sex with these men. So it was kind of a, a joke about, you know. Like a beefsteak tomato kind of thing. I don't even know what that means and I don't want you to tell me. Okay, it's tell me. It's a type of tomato. <laughs> I thought it was like a weird sex thing. No, but like a beef a beefsteak tomato is like the big tomato like the kind that like would go on a sandwich like the big boy tomatoes and like if you have Girl, you ever cut think, a tomato into quarters like it's it's looking I, a little like uh, no dude i was thinking it was more just referring to the leather thing that she carried that was like literally made out of well now i'm gonna have to cut out all this tomato talk no, leave so it. i don't sound leave stupid it. That's, that's gold no you're not as stupid. i'm growing some you is smart I'm you growing some beefsteak tomatoes upstairs right now. You're just, Danny's just a little kitchen witch. All right. That's just the frame of mind that she has about everything. And I think that's very pure. That so, is true. That is true. <laughs> that is what I aim to be. That is what you aim to be. So there's all these shitty articles. Like I said, they refer to her as beefsteak Pete, which is fucked. Um, but it does show that she was well known by the police through the 1850s. So well past that original crime. And mm -hmm. also has a number of different female names, always dressed as a woman. Because, you know, she she loved an alias. Wait, so, you what? said into the 1850s? Yeah. In 1836, when she was first tried, she said she was 33, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. So if we're all the way into the girl, get it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Menopause who? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. So, um, like I said before, you have these shitty historians who look at her gender expression as just a way of you know, who they're calling a man, because by the way, they, they uh -huh. misgendered her the entire time, um, they did. to have sex with other men. But if she was supposedly using that device, what sexual gratification is she getting out of that is my question. I don't think it's some little trick. I think that's like we were talking about. We kind of like broached the subject already. There's a larger discourse around this in the culture today. Trans people aren't cis people in disguises trying to fucking spy on you in the bathroom or beat you at sports. Don't be a fuck, all right? Honestly, if you were that fucking afraid 
that a trans person is going to beat you in your sport, again, look inward. Also, does that mean that you just don't think you're good enough? If you want to be the very best, the best at what? Okay, then like, then do the work. Okay, I also, I sent my partner a TikTok the other day where a guy was saying that Joe Rogan is trans and that's probably going to get me canceled, but... No, um, I saw that okay, TikTok okay, okay, okay. You know what I was about. like, so, like yes. He, the points he was, obviously he was trying to be like I inflammatory. I no, I think I sent it to you, bitch. I think... <laughs> we probably sent it back and forth. Probably, we, I've definitely done that before where I've been like scrolling through. I'm like, oh, I've sent this to Daniel and then I realize I'm like scrolling through the ones that you sent me. But anyway... Um, mm-hmm. He 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 was trying to be inflammatory before bringing up Joe Rogan, obviously, but he was talking about the yeah. fact that men use testosterone to reach some kind of like gender euphoria, you know, like to feel gender affirming, it, gender affirming. Thank you. Gender affirming care to feel that euphoric, like they feel good in their bodies. How is that any different than a trans man using testosterone to have gender affirming care? Instead of snaps right now, I'm literally waving um, my trans flag that a student <laughs> Danny's running around me. with it like tied around her neck i'm i'm li- <laughs> well no it's a little tiny baby one but i'm literally just like sitting here waving my trans flag like solidarity oh man and i will not stop so i don't know people are dicks but i think you know i've already proved it i feel like i have proven it, that those historians are freaking stupid but another point that i think disproves the idea that she was just this cis person taking advantage is that court and census records show that mary was a skilled craftsperson so she actually, like, she could have been, you know, a working, a worker of some sort. Like, she could have chosen to work, if she, if she was a cis man, she could have chosen to work as a cis man and make an income. But she didn't, because it's not who she fucking was. Exactly. And also, also, cis male sex workers fucking exist. Like, if exactly. that's how she wanted to get business, she could have gotten business, okay? But she I didn't. She chose to live as a woman because she's a woman so in that more recent study that was considerably less annoying researchers were wondering like why the fuck mary wouldn't leave new york city <laughs> like that was what they were held up on it's like carl you like these people know you and they are very much able to get you sweetie like why do you keep doing shit here but i think this is actually where we get some like pretty cool insight into her personal life finally other than just like the caricatures that are painted of her um we know from the trial that she had you know female sex worker friends and other like criminal type friends that she kind of like were in her circle just because as part of the lifestyle, considered criminal. Um, But it turns out she had some other close connections in the area, like in at least two really close relationships during her lifetime. One was with a white man named John Williams, alias Joseph Linus, because he was also a thief. He got arrested with her in 1844. Little Bonnie and Clyde action. Um, And the other was a black woman named Betsy who was her wife, according to census records. They were married in 1855. Are you okay? What just happened? I'm just, I'm, I I was a very You were sending me a picture of your trans flag. You were not listening. I just got it on my phone, you lying little shit. (laughs) No, that got sent a a little bit ago. This, I was like awkward squealing because I was very excited about her having a wife. none of that sound came through. (laughs) Yeah, it was just, it was very weird and squeaky. I'm sorry. Sinus (laughs) Oh yeah, you're still getting over that sinus (laughs) infection. Um, and also in an 1848 case file from yet another arrested indictment for pickpocketing because our girl just kept going. Um, so pickpocketing a John, we see the last time Mary identifies herself on an official record. It wasn't this whole like, tell us your gender, tell us what's in your pants bullshit. Like it was in her arraignment trial or Mm -hmm. arraignment before her trial. Instead, it was just literally like, what's your name? So she identifies herself on an official record as a woman, but she gives another alias. So this time around, they weren't focused on her gender. They just like literally she had to identify herself. So she says, I'm Julia Johnson. I was born in Jersey. I'm 27 years old. So she shaped a few years off, more than a few years off. (laughs) Just a few. (laughs) Um, I am married. My husband has gone on a trading voyage to New Orleans and other places. I live in the rear of number 70 or 72 Sullivan Street and do a day's work for a living. Like, that seems like a very rehearsed story, sweetie. <laughs> yes. Mary, 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 always on her bullshit. Also, but, I find it weird that it's 70 or 72. Like, are you not sure your address, <laughs> love? <laughs> yeah. So her interaction with the man she robbed was the main subject of the interview, which is like, yeah, it fucking should be, right? Like, actually talk about the crime. Um, there weren't any references to how she was dressed, her gender presentation, how long she had dressed or identified as Julia. It was literally just, let's talk about the crime because that's what we're here to do. 
um, which means she was passing again. Right. So yeah, that's, it's a short one because there's just not as much known about Mary, but she was a complicated gal just trying to live her truth, except, except for when she lied about her truth with all the aliases, but <laughs> she was always a woman and, you know, she's just trying to make a living. Just let her live. Damn it. Let her do her sex work. Just let her live her life. Decriminalize sex work. I'm going to get up on another soapbox while I'm on it. Yes. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Day. Okay. I haven't, I haven't had our sponsor yet. So fucking cheers to that. Decriminalize sex work. Yes. But yeah, it's a, it's a short one. Usually I have like a lot of babbling to do, but this one, we just don't know a lot about Mary. She was a, a, a gal of mystery. I wish I, I knew more I about like, like her story. I know. I wish, I wish history wasn't so like racist homophobic. and transphobic because I would really love to know <laughs> history is homophobic. Yeah. yeah. But I, I would love to know more about like Mary's formative years. So that's always so fascinating to me. Like people yeah. we talk about when we talk about their like their childhood. I'm like, that, tell me your childhood trauma. Like five minutes into meeting someone. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is, that is literally us. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Do you, want, do you want to hear a little bit of about... mine so that you feel more comfortable? Here, oh, here's yes. a little blurb of oh. something that you're going to find salacious, but I'm like, this is nothing, but I'm okay. comfortable Couple so that you don't that. actually, so that I feel like I'm sharing, but that I'm actually sharing yes. nothing. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, a couple things about that. When I do that, I feel like people always think I'm trying to one-up them, but really I'm just like trying to make them more comfortable by being Same. like, look, I can relate to you. But then other <laughs> times I'll tell a story, like this happened with my old coworkers, like where I used to work like a year ago all the time, where I would like tell a story and then laugh and they'd look at me and they'd be like, bitch, are you That's okay? And I'd be <laughs> like, you know, now that you're asking, I feel like maybe I'm not. <laughs> Oh my god, I would do that all the time, and so far, I mean, like, not in a like, oh, I don't have friends, but so far, I'm oh, not yeah. really making friends at my job. But um, it like I think it's the in, nature of your position now, where you're just kind of yeah, like, yeah, you know I don't I mean? sit near anyone, so like, yeah. it, it's gen- it's genuinely hard for me to actually like make connections throughout the day. Right. Which like, I'm not upset about this. I'm still feeling like I'm on track, like I'm at a good spot. That's good. But, yeah. So far, I have not trauma dumped on anyone, <laughs> which is good. <laughs> even even like something where I'm like, oh, I wouldn't consider that trauma dumping, but the average person would be like, well, you would tell just some person that. Okay, I was like, gonna oh, mention this before okay. too. Like, mm-hmm. I know I always go back to I saw a TikTok, but I saw a TikTok where it was like, <laughs> oh, you're. What are we gonna s- do when it's banned? Like, we're gonna have so much time oh, for activities. <laughs> fuck that. But it was like. Uh, when you when your two friends are siblings who are trauma dumping and they're going back and forth like do you remember that one time mom ran, ran over the dog and they're like they just go back and forth like oh bro i forgot about that and the friends just sitting in between them like the book and i feel like that's how our two best friends feel when we talk dude when we have our family vacations and then we're like okay one second trauma dump and then we go on for a half hour and they're like you guys okay yeah yeah oh my god that's so sorry funny. guys oh speaking of tiktok cousins we were just zoning out uh, leaving the rest of you all for a minute there um we made a corny fucking tiktok and it's super fun um it's at the gay cousin club just like our instagram at the gay cousin club and also our little our little tech guru danny made a website website guys so yeah it's um just literally the gay cousin club dot com uh yeah. pretty fucking simple i mean there's there'll not like a ton there. of stuff on no, there we'll, there'll be more we'll on there eventually more, but, but we kind of just wanted yeah. like we talked about being more googleable like when we tell people like hey we have this silly little podcast um then they can actually find it and so far it's working between the tiktok and the website beca- the tiktok but the, between the tiktok and the website because um we had like we haven't published anything in a while because you know danny died again but um but we've had more consistent <laughs> viewing which is pretty yeah cool. but we've had more people like downloading and stuff so that's uh, that's super fun and I do want to say there is a merch link on the website that is not live. That's just because I am being hopeful that at some point I'm going to convince Brittany to let me make a bunch of really stupid stickers and shit and sell it to I, okay. the five people that would actually buy our shit. I think <laughs> it's so – It's the stuff she's made is so fun and so cute, but I'm just like I – literally it's going to be our like few friends buying it. And not even them, because I, I would tell our friends, like, don't spend your money on this shit, dummy. Like, so I don't know. If there's anybody out like, there who... buy my shit, I'm hilarious. If there's anybody <laughs> out there who recently found us on TikTok, and you're actually enjoying yourself, and you're going to come back for more, like, please stay. We love you so much. I don't always rant. That's a lie. I rant a lot. I'm so, so sorry. We do. It's pretty but, much what we do. But if you enjoy it here, and you want to be one of our gay cousins, 
um, please stick around. And then maybe I'll let Danny make some merch. I don't know. I feel very narcissistic when we're like, we have merch. Like, what the, who the fuck do we think we are? We have 13 episodes. We don't even have 13 episodes. This has not been published yet. I don't know. I made some pretty funny stickers and I just want to buy that shit and stick it on my water bottle. That's so, like, true. That's, that's all cute. I'm looking for here. He wants to sell merch to her. You want to buy your, you dumbass. Yes. And I, I want to buy my thing. own merch. I do not think you are a stupid or a dumb person, but if you're spending money on something that you created. Well, I would have to spend money on it anyway, Brittany. So like to get it. I do capitalism. Capitalism. Should I get on another um, soapbox? <laughs> you know, not I feel like we'll probably have an episode where that'll be more prevalent. <laughs> but um oh, here's a tidbit that I'm definitely gonna edit out. Okay, if if Danny had if Danny did edit out that first part, she just told me that her therapist started listening to our podcast and I feel like it's gonna explain so much about who you are. I love that. Oh, that's so cool. We love a supportive th- therapist. Me too. Oh, you know what I'm thinking of? Not to change subject here, but no, going back don't. to what I said right before this, like to the new people that are here from TikTok, we appreciate you for one. But then two, if they don't know the Gay Cousin Club, like that whole thing, how that started, which I'm assuming they do, because okay. if you're listening to us, you're probably queer, but like the well, whole And crime. it's in our first episode and in our like show notes and everything. Yeah, but I don't know. Not, every, not everybody is as like, oh, yeah. you know, point A, B, C, like you are, where you have to start from the beginning. Danny's still working on... Um, And that's why we drink. Like, she will not jump out of order to get up to speed with me. Like, she's going from the first episode. But I have, like, 24 episodes left. I'm almost there. They're excellent. I love Adam and Christine. But um, so it's the whole, like, you know, you're sitting around the family reunion. Everybody has a gay cousin. You don't know who the gay cousin is. You're obviously the gay cousin. Um, Danny and I are both the gay cousins. So that is why we are here. (laughs) Welcome, other cousins. Yes. And, yes, we are sisters. But we're also the gay cousins. Yeah, because we have cousins. The that rest was also, of our That was a pa- also yes. apparently oh confusing God. for somebody who doesn't under- which tells you, like, they are not a queer person because they didn't get the joke. Yes. But that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> we are, we're getting very random. It's been, like, 10 minutes of us just straight babbling, so let's wrap this shit up, huh? That's okay. Um, also, I did send you the picture of my trans flag and my queer duck. Um, both of those are from two separate students, both of them oh. non-binary students. I love um, that. So that's my non-binary, non-binary duck and my trans flag that's that cool. I took Love with that. me when I left the classroom because they made me very happy. So that's why they had to be front and center for this episode. We dedicate this to those little NBs. Oh, my little babies. I miss yeah. them. My little babies. Yeah. My little um, babies. Yes. But – yeah, this was awesome, and I really hope that you guys are enjoying us still. And you know, check out our website if you want, um, thegaycousinclub.com. That feels really fun to say. And yeah, um, that that is links to all of our socials, so you could just go there and you it know, does and go look at the funny TikToks Danny's been making, <laughs> and I've been posting. I can only take credit for the captions because I have not had time to make TikToks, and Danny has been having lots of fun. So. I, I have been having lots of fun. I haven't been <laughs> sleeping, but I've been having lots of fun. Um, but also, if you don't want to go to the website, our socials are TikTok and Instagram are both at the Gay Cousin Club, or you can shoot us an email at tgccpod at gmail.com. Um, mm-hmm. You know, leave us some reviews, leave us comments, do whatever you want, but keep listening and keep being awesome. Yep. So I think it's time to call this meeting to an end. Meeting adjourned. Love you. Bye. Bye. Love you.